hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever living boo boo stain off that market watch subscribe button as I have a terrible headache that uh, has been persisting all day. Not from my uh, Labor Day drinking and partying and all that fun stuff. Actually, really, all I did was sit by my pool. But hope you're all having a fantastic day. Wanted to let the market settle down for a couple of days before I did a market watch on all the prices of cards and where things have fallen. And a lot of this, unfortunately, with how TCG Player works, and no matter how much I talk about this, it never changes. People are skewing the market with incorrect listings um, because Fiend Smith Engraver is not actually a $35 card. This is the OCG version. Obviously, we can't play OCG cards. So th this just isn't accurate. So what you're actually looking at here for an engraver is that light plays about $89, and then near mint is $90, and it goes up from there. It's not $35. I don't know what person would buy a Japanese ultra rare when this isn't playable, but people people love to scam others, unfortunately. So we're going to at least keep that in mind as we go through stuff. Most of the stuff's accurate, but there is some stuff that's just wrong. Uh, engravers are still $90. The, the engine is still good. Um, it's Even though you don't have access to Lacrima or Apo in a way, uh, or Beatrice or any of that anymore, it's still a fantastic engine that's very splashable, and you don't have to commit as much extra deck space. And it just depends on what you want. You know, do you need access to Wave High King to stop the nib? Do you have space to be able to play the Fiendsmith package? If so, you should probably play it. So yeah, it's it's still a great engine. Seventy two on info boxes, um, forty five on Exodia uh, QCRs. Um, you should definitely pick that up if you can. Again, these are Japanese listings. EZ is not $10. It's actually getting up to the $40 to $50 range. I remember at launch, these things were $20. Now, why are these things going up? Well, because you can play White Force cards with the Azamina cards that are coming out in Rage of the Abyss. So if you want to play White Forest or Azamina, anything like that, you need to pick up your White Force stuff about five minutes ago uh, because this is this stuff is slowly going up. I wouldn't be surprised if EZ's hit the $50 mark. So do keep that in mind. Mole Charmies are not $7. Um, they are actually about $50. Uh, this one here is listed for about $50 and change, and then they shoot up to $55. Is this a card that you need a play set of right now? No, technically. Is this a card you're going to want a play set of by the time Rage of the Abyss comes out? Yes, because Perulia plus the new Mole Charmy Foie Ross out of uh, Rage of the Abyss is disgusting. You want to play with six max C's. Your mama wants to play with six max C's. You're going to want six max C's in your deck, so do keep that in mind. Um, let's see, that's that's pretty much everything for the first page. Of course, the QCRs are going to be a, a decent chunk of change. Uh, moving on to the next page here, just real quick to look at some other stuff. Estellars, uh, I'm sure these things aren't actually $10. These things are actually $20, so they're they're kind of cheap. I remember they are like 50 at launch. Uh, Dominus Purges. Uh, I doubt that they're five dollars. They're probably like in the twenties. Uh, Millennium Onks sevens. That's actually not bad. And then regular Exodias are four fifties. Uh, that grass looks greener, aka that ass looks thicker. Uh, all of these German non-English listings. Uh, light play English is twenty six. Uh, what's a man got to do for a near mint? A near mint's about. 26 to 30 oh but that feedback that was garbage so yeah you're looking at about 27 to 29 30 ish dollars so not terrible uh, is it going to see play uh if you're playing the joshua schmidt paleo special then yeah or if you're the one dude in the room that wants to relive infernoids with 60 cards i mean you could uh we have shifter now so you activate grass and they change shifter if they didn't do it in the draw phase you're gonna be crapping all over the floor um, snake eye stuff. So this is actually interesting. Some of the stuff is actually pretty cheap. Obviously, the Flamberge, this is incorrect. This is more like 35 for the uh, QCR, but it's a one of. Um, 42 on the Poplar, which is a one of. That's that's uh, even though it's expensive, like it's not terrible. Um, they I thought the Snake Eye Ash ulti popped up on here. I guess not. But when I checked earlier today, it was like $17, which was not terrible, especially since it's just a one of. Let me see if I can pull it up here. But as you saw with the other prices, the Snake Eye stuff is actually not a whole lot. Yeah, even the ultis right now for a one of is $20. And I'm really tempted to pick it up because it's only a one of. And if you want to play Snake Eye stuff like Max Rarity, you're not spending a lot of money for this core. So if you want fairly cheap Snake Eye stuff to play when Azamina comes out, uh, there's nothing to say that you can't. Oh, here it is right here. Um, yeah, $17, $18, and everything else is pretty cheap. 
Um, looking at Age of Overlord overall, 200 on uh, Black Witch QCRs. You're looking at 40s on Little Knights. Remember that this is getting a reprint in the tins. Uh, so is Sky Crisis. Uh, Little Knight is still 190 for the QCR out of the set. 92s on the Wanted QCR. Six dollars on the regulars. That's crazy. The Horus cards are cheap AF because honestly, the engine's pretty garbage. Twelve dollars on Black Witches. That is um, that's not terrible. Like, the decks really drop down in value. The, 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 what I realize now with Snake Eye after the Bayless is that the end board is just not very strong. Like, you're very susceptible to Nibiru, especially if you don't have um, Wave Hiking up on your board. Regular OSSs are dollars. Flamberge is two dollars. Like, this deck is going to be nice and cheap until we get uh, the Azamina cards in about six weeks. Um, Dragon Rulers are kind of cheap for the Secret Rares. Secret Rares are the highest printing. That's why we're looking at the 2013 10s. I'm looking at about a dollar on Red Ox, ten dollars on Blaster, and five on Tidal, and about let's call it two dollars on Tempest. Um, the Dragon Rulers are uh, they're not what they used to be. Maybe you're going to play Blaster with Gold Sark in uh, Tempai, but I don't know, man. I, I think the Dragon Rulers have lost their touch. Maybe people will kind of exploit this with like Super Rejuve and like an Exodia deck, um, but outside of some cheesiness of the cheese i'm not seeing it look at how cheap all this other stuff is outside of sealed tins diamond dire wolf's 19 cents you know i remember a time when diamond dire wolf first came out and it was like 60 dollars. i remember when black ship of corn was like the new tech card and it was like a 20 dollar card i remember when this shit was expensive bro that's crazy um looking at things in general oh also here at the kaiba briefcase these were up to about uh 1700 there's been a few more listings 1500 where you can pay 600 just for a sealed deck um that's actually kind of a steal for a sealed deck um 600 that's not terrible because really it's kind of over a thousand um but yeah we, if in case you're new to the channel we're always checking this um because it's, i've made so much money off of this this is crazy 250 for the blue eyes is 220 for the qcr 125 for attack guidance armor uh, 70 on the Trick Mirror, 70 on Life Shaver, 32 on the Grappler. Like, uh, if you bought into this at 400, you made so much fucking money. Um, everything in general, this Dragon Master Knight's not 399. It's a thousand dollars. It's because of the Japanese listings. Master Magi is not 14 dollars. Uh, don't worry, you didn't lose money. It's because everybody's listing these OCG listings. It's actually 850, 880, slowly up to 900 dollars. Don't worry, you don't need this to play the Blue Eyes deck. It's um, it's actually kind of bad. Uh, this isn't 300, it's actually 450, um, which is interesting to see that the Apple Starlights are under 500 right now. Um, you may want to swipe that up. 776 for a Phantom Rage case. That wouldn't be a bad purchase as a like an investment to hold on to. Um, Blue Eyes Pharaoh's Rares got bought out. This is $980. That's, uh, that's not worth the investment. Uh, Needle Worm, 200. Okay. Um, OG Exodia Ultimate Beginner's Pack, uh, that's probably a damage at $20. $15 on that Max C, that's either uh, an OCG listing or a really damaged one like someone farted on it or something. $418 for the Dark Magician Girl Secret Rare. Yeah, unfortunately, there's a lot of OCG listings coming into the market, so things are very much skewed. $600 for an Alligator Sword? Uh, no, absolutely not. Karibos got bought out. <laughs> someone wasted their money. Um, right Arm of the Forbidden One GX Beginner's Pack 200. I mean, if you want to play Exodia in style and you don't want the Starlights, you got to go for the Ultimate Beginner's Packs. So, guys, let me know what you think about all this down in the comments below. Um, stuff's looking kind of cheap right now. Um, so, if, if you want to get in, especially if you want to play a Tier 1 meta deck and you've got, I would say, 100 bucks to blow, like, pick up the Snake Eyes stuff. And, like, if you're upset that Fiendsmith is still expensive, I mean... I would imagine that there's a world where you can play the Azamina cards with Snake Eye and not have to play Fiendsmith stuff. Like, I'm sure that there's some kind of quote-unquote budget way that you can make it work, even if you don't have access to, say, $330 for Fiendsmith cores. So, do with that info what you will, but I think the Snake Eye stuff's definitely worth picking up right now. Guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.